This is the construction of the key ring atom. We're going to build a working model. Now, to do this, we're going to need two energy states. One of the energy states is a proton ring. Holds the atom together. Two uh, tadtrons make up a proton ring. Now, for the key ring atom, we're going to take another particle. We're going to call it the electron ring. There's going to be lots and lots of electron rings. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to show you how this works. We're going to have a, a tadtron, which I took a nine inch piece of speaker wire. That's all it is. It's easy to see, uh, easy to work with. Now, energy will have a state. Just like if I bend this in a circle, the wire stays like that. You have to think that the tadron also works very similar to that. Now, at the core of the atom is the proton ring. Now, to make a proton ring, we need two tadrons, and they will be in a state just like this wire. Now, when I first did my first theory, I built it just like a key ring. And then I came to realize that you needed grooves or little holes to hold electron rings in. And that's where I came up with, you know what? If the universe is exactly like DNA, could the proton ring be like a DNA strand? So what we did was, was we took two wires and we twisted them just like a DNA strand. Now notice how there's little holes here that come into play. Take the whole strand, work it all the way out, and then what we do is we curl it, and then we hook the ends together, like so. This is our proton ring. This is what's going to hold all the electron rings together. So now the next thing you do is you take another tadron, you put it into what I'm going to call is the electron ring state. Turn it in a circle. Now, the proton ring stays stationary. The electron ring now is going to turn in a circle. That's its state. It will spin in a circle. Now, whenever we were doing this, I took a, a spring, a kid's spring here, and I used one of those. They're much easier. They stay in a solid, perfect circle. And I think that's exactly what an electron ring does like so, as you can see it here. Now, the job of the electron ring is, when it's in this state, is to spin in this groove. Now, what we do is, we take and we fill in all the holes with electron rings until it's got a full circle all the way around. Now, I think my geometry is correct, but the number of electron rings, I'm sure I'm way low. I mean, I've got, uh, like 20 in here, and uh, in reality there's probably around a thousand. So I'm, I'm about a 50 to 1. Of course, the electron ring is going to be much thinner, much smaller, but if we, if we did that you wouldn't be able to see it. But you can see how this works. Just imagine thousands of these in there. Now, here's what's really amazing. Some of the latest empirical evidence that they've taken of atoms is they're not round like they thought they were. They are obladed at the poles. You know what that means? Donut shaped, flattened at the poles. Latest empirical evidence says the atom looks like this. Now this hole in the middle is going to come into play. All the tetrons are going to circle one way. And when we talk about gravity, this hole is going to be the answer to gravity. Now, this model works. It holds together on its own. Keys on a key ring, they work. They hold together. This thing here, the standard model, proton, electron, and electromagic force. It's the magic atom. What do you want me to tell you? You have to have magic to make this thing work. That's why you build models. So, putting both models out here, the idea is 
you look at the models and you can decide which one makes the most sense to you because physics and chemistry are easy with the correct geometry.